<coughs> Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find at the bottom of page number 225. At the very bottom of page 225, and today is our lesson number 97. Let's take a look at it. We are given two equations, 4x plus 3y equals 13, and then we are told that x plus 2y equals 2. And our job is to find the values of x and y that will satisfy both of this equation at the same time. For example, for example, if we are told, if we are told that x plus y equals 5, if you are told that x plus y equals 5, what values of x and y will satisfy this equation? Will sat satisfy this equation is how we speak in algebra, which simply means will work for this equation. Well, the answer is there are infinite possible values of x and y that will do the job here. Infinite possible values. For example, you can have a 1 plus 4, x can be 1, y can be 4, or x can be 4, y can be 1, x can be 2, y can be 3, it could be 3 and 2, it could be 5 and 0, it could be 0 and 5, x could be x could be negative 10 and y could be positive 5 or x could be positive 5 and y could be negative 10. There are infinite possible values of x and y that will satisfy this equation. But in addition to the, this equation, if we are given one more equation, if we are given one more equation underneath it and we are told that x minus y equals 1, now, there is only one unique value of x and there is only one unique value of y which will satisfy both of this equation at the same time. There is only one unique value of x and there is only one unique value of y that will satisfy both of this equation at the same time, simultaneously. Which is why these equations are called simultaneous equations. Because whatever value that we claim that x is going to have and whatever value that we claim that y will have must satisfy not just one equation or the other, but both of them. For example, here, if you, if you were to add up the two equations, positive y will drop out with negative y and x positive x plus positive x will give us 2x equals 6 and therefore x equals 3. If x equals 3, if x equals 3, then 3 plus 2 equals 5, y must be 2. And as you can see clearly, those values also satisfy the second equation. If x is 3, then 3 minus 2 equals 1. You see, x is 3 and y is 2. And that's it. Those are the only values of x and y that will satisfy both of this equation at the same time. Our job is to find those values of x and y for these two equations. Now, just like here, we, would, we were able to eliminate one, one variable. That's exactly what we're going to try to do here. Now, listen carefully. There are two ways we can go about doing it. We can either somehow convert this coefficient of this x, this x has a coefficient of 1 right now. If there is nothing there, if there is nothing there, that means it has 1. So if you were to take the second equation and multiply it by 4, this 1 will become 4, because 4 times 1 is 4, it will have the same coefficient as this guy on the top. And that will kill the axis. Or, we can try to make the coefficient of y the same. If you try to make the coefficient of y the same, then we're going to have to take the first equation and multiply it by 2, 3 times 2 is 6, and we're going to have to take the second equation and multiply it by 3. 3 times 2 is 6, you see. We'll have 6y here and 6y here. But in that case, we'll end up doing twice the work. We'll have to multiply the top equation by 2, the bottom equation by 3, in order, in order for us to make the coefficient of y the same. Let's not do twice the work. Let's just make coefficient of x the same. So we're going to take our second equation right here. Equation number 2. And we're going to multiply it by 4, which implies, this is how we write it, equation number 2 multiplied by 4 implies we have 4 times x plus 2y, x plus 2y, which equals 4 times 2. We take our 2 and multiply it by 4. 
You see, we took our x plus y and we multiplied by 4. Let's get rid of this one from outside. So now we have 4x plus 8y equals 2 times 4 which is 8. And now we add to it our equation number 1. Our equation number 1 says 4x, equation number 1 implies 4x plus 3y equals 13. Now let's subtract the bottom equation from the top equation. And when you subtract the bottom equation from top equation, this is a positive, positive x, positive, positive 4x becomes negative. This positive 3y will become negative 3y. This positive 13 will become negative 13. And if you are having trouble understanding any of this thing, if, I, if, you, if you feel that I'm going a bit too fast, and some of you might be, I'm not suggesting that all of you, obviously, but if you happen to be one of those people who is very rusty in algebra, then the thing to do is to learn the algebra from scratch and you will find 200 videos, 200 videos on my channel which will teach you algebra from day one. For the first 100 days you will learn the elementary concept of algebra where you will learn these kind of things and for the next and, and the following 100 days, 100, day number 101 to 200, you will learn how to solve algebra word problems. Quite a few word problems appear on the GRE and the SAT and so forth. Anyway, <coughs> so that's that. So we subtract, here we have a positive 4x, here we have a negative 4x that drops out. A positive, 4, a positive 8y and a negative 3y will give us 5y. And here we have 8 minus 13. We have 8 minus 13, which is a negative 5. 8 minus 13 is a negative 5. Let's multiply both sides by 5, let's, let's divide both sides by 5. The 5 drops out and y equals negative 5 divided by positive 5 which is a negative 1. There you go, that's the value of y. Now that we have the value of y, we can solve for x. Let's do it here. Let's do it right here. Let's take the first, the second equation here. Second equation tells us, equation number 2 tells us that x equals, x equals 2 minus 2y. Two 2 minus 2y two and we just found that y is negative 1. 2 minus 2y, two, two times negative 1 negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, so it becomes 4, positive 4. And those are, our, those are the values of x and y. x equals, x equals 4 and y equals negative 1. Let's put, let's put them back in the equation and see if they actually make sense. Let's verify it. Okay. I'm not going to do it out, just, you just have to listen to it. We are claiming that x equals 4. Okay. Or if you like, we can actually do it out here. Let's verify it. Our first equation is 4x plus 3y equals 13. And we are claiming that x equals positive 4. So 4 times positive 4 plus 3 times y, and y is negative, which we are claiming that y equals negative 1. Let's see if it makes sense. 4 times 4 is 16, and 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, and 16 minus 3 is 13. Voila, it works. Similarly, we can do the second equation. Second equation is x plus 2y equals x plus 2y equals 2. And we are claiming that x is 4 and we are claiming that y is negative 1. So 2 minus negative 1 is 2, 4 minus 2 will equal 2. See, it works, it does the job. The reason I'm saving the room here now, uh, the reason I was saving the room here on the, on the right hand side is because now we're going to solve the same problem with a little bit of a different method. This is called the elimination method. This is called the elimination method. Elimination method because we are eliminating one variable and trying to figure out the thing in, with just one variable. Now we're going to do the same problem with a different method known as the substitution method. In the substitution method what we do is we solve one of these two equations in terms of the other variable and then substitute back in the other equation. For example, second equation tells us, equation number 2 tells us that x plus 2y equals 2, which implies 
if you were to subtract 2y from both sides, if you were to subtract 2y from both sides, it will give us 2y will cancel out and x equals 2 minus 2y. We're going to take this thing, let's call it equation number 3. We're going to take this equation number 3 and put it back in equation number 1. So substitute, substitute, that's what it means, SUBS substitute equation number 3, which is this equation right here, into equation number 1. Let's do it. Equation number, equation number 1 says 4 times x, but now we know that x equals 2 minus 2y. So we're going to put it in here. 4 times x, which is 2 minus 2y plus 2y equals 2. Voila. Now we just have to simplify it. That's all. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 2y equals 2. Negative 8y and a positive 2y will give us 6, negative 6y. So we have 8 minus negative, 8 minus 6y equals 2. Let's subtract 8 from both sides. And this 8 drops out. Negative 6y equals negative 6. And y equals positive 1. We have a, we have a problem. We are not getting the same answer. I have made a what is known in technical terms, a boo-boo. Let's find out where our boo-boo was. Okay, here is the equation, x plus 2y equals 2, x plus 2y equals 2, subtract 2y from both sides, we get 2 minus 2y equals x, which is fine. Let's put this x into this equation here, 4 times 2 minus 2y, what the hell? Oh, I have made a I have made a, what is again known as in technical term as a pig's breakfast. This is not the right equation. It's 4x plus 3y equals 13. 4x, this is 4 times x. This part is our x. 4x plus 3y. What is the 3y? I'm mixing up the two equations. I'm not paying attention. This is what happens when you don't pay attention. And, and that's why it's a very good idea at the very end to verify your answer. Now, here, here it says, y equals positive 1. Now, by using the y equals positive 1, had we solved for x, and once we have found the value of x, and had you, go back, had you gone back, had you gone back, and substitute these values of x and y back in these equations, you would have seen, you would have seen, that they do not work. They do not satisfy the equation. This is wrong. This is wrong. This is, as I told you before, what is known in the technical jargon of algebra as a pig's breakfast. That's what that is. It's not algebra. It's a pig's breakfast. It's a mess. You see, this is our this is our 4x, 4x. Where the hell does 2y come from? It's not 2y, it's 3y. 4x plus 3y equals 13. Let's fix it. Four, I'm going to erase it. This, uh, that's it. This is all wrong. 4x, 4x plus 3y equals 13. 4x plus 3y equals 13. Now the very fact that you are watching this video, I could have very easily read on the, read on the problem and, and posted a new one without any mistakes and you would have never known that I made a boo-boo. The very fact that you are watching it, there is a reason for it. I want you to see how easy it is to make a mistake, to make a careless mistake and how to go about catching it. Making a mistake is not a big deal. Everybody makes a mistake. The point is, are you able to realize first of all that you made a mistake and secondly, once you realize that you have made a mistake, are you able to go back and retrace your steps to find out where the boo-boo occurred? This is where the boo-boo occurred. It's 4x plus 3y. I don't know what the hell I was writing before. I started out with 4x and then I moved up here. I was combining the two equations. I wasn't paying attention. 4x plus 3y equals 13. Now let's solve it. And when we solve for y now, it better give us the same value of y as we got here, which is y equals negative 1. It cannot give a different value just because we are solving it with, for, with a different method. Just because we are solving this problem with a different method, it doesn't mean that we're going to get a different answer. Obviously, answer has to be the same. Let's do it. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8y plus 3y equals 13. 
negative 8y and a positive 3y gives us negative 5y, so negative 8 minus, minus 5y equals 13. Let's subtract 8 from both sides. Let's subtract 8 from both sides and this 8 drops out. This 8 will drop out and we get negative 5y equals 13, positive 13 and a negative 8 gives us 5, voila. And if you sub divide both sides by negative 5, I'm going to continue here, I don't know how far you can read here. It says negative 5 equals negative 5y equals positive 5. So if you will divide both sides by negative 5, y equals negative 1. Voila. See? If you will divide both sides by negative 5, the negative 5 will drop out and it will say y equals y equals negative 1. I'm going to drop this negative equal, I'm going to drop this equal sign down because my teachers would not like it if, if my algebra teacher were to see my work. There you go. That's it. So now y equals negative 1. And once you find out the value of y, y equals negative 1, you put it back in one of the equations just like we did here and solve for x and of course you're going to find the same value of x. So these are the two methods. The two methods that are, that are there are substitution methods and the elimination method. And of course the purpose of my doing this problem in such detail was not actually to teach you this part of algebra from scratch, which of course is silly. One cannot learn algebra just by doing one problem. So we're not learning something from scratch. The purpose is that uh, you did learn it at one point in your time, many, 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 many moons ago. And hopefully this will all bring it back. You understand? I will see you tomorrow where we will do, where we will deal with uh, quadratic equations. Oh, even more fun. So we'll solve quadratic equation, the problem that you see on page number 226, the, ver the very next page. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.